Hey, welcome back to the channel. This is my 1986 1JZ powered Porsche 944. I'm gonna do a quick overview of it and tell you guys where the project is heading in the future. So pretty shortly after I got the car back in 2008, I ended up deciding, hey, here's a great idea. Let's tear out the motor and put something with more power in it. And of course, I didn't want to go down the route that everybody else has already charted because that'd be too easy, right? So I decided to do something completely different. I'm like, hey, turbo whoosh noises. Let's put in a 1JZ. JZ engine, no shit. And what did I tell you? So I pulled the stock motor out, uh, made adapter plates for the engine to the original stock 944 drivetrain, and dropped the 1JZ motor in it, in its stock form. So the bell housing clutch adapter plate uh, was a quarter inch steel, built that from scratch. I uh, got it all installed in the engine bay and got it running. And then ended up moving. And in the move, I decided, you know what would be a great idea? Why don't we just take everything we did right now and toss it in the trash and start over by putting the entire Toyota drivetrain into the 944. So engine came back out. Easiest way to get the engine out of the 944, by the way, is to lift the 944 over the engine. So I had to widen the transmission tunnel, still used a bunch of original transmission tunnel material, but I welded in two side plates in addition to it to widen it. Differential, I had to do a custom differential mount in the rear. And then started reworking the entire intake and exhaust plumbing. So I ended up putting in a GT30 turbo in there, uh, 7363 for the ratios and aftermarket fuel rail. Originally I went with 400cc uh, Bosch Big Green injectors and then in the rear we went with a 10 gallon fuel cell and a AEM pump. The AEM pump failed shortly thereafter but I ended up replacing it with a 380 liter per hour uh, subsequent pump. And, and as the project's been progressing over the last decade, it, it just gets more and more custom work over time. So at this point, it's getting pretty close to be drivable and complete. There's still a lot of work that needs to go into the project and we'll keep working on it. So this wiring nest here, what I'm gonna do is eventually I'm gonna take all that, rework it, and put in what is called an M unit blue. The M unit blue is a controller that basically once you turn the key on, it automates everything else for the circuit relays and connection lights, everything. And it'll do custom blink cycles, fade in and out if you want it to fade in and out. And also performs the job of a relay block. So we'll be able to minimize our relay block and utilize this for customizing all the electronics in the car and do away with most of these buttons down at the bottom. So up towards the firewall, the brake master cylinder, obviously I could not keep the brake booster. It was just too confined of a space. Uh, with the original 
intake manifold, it wrapped around, it interfered even more than this aftermarket one that I have now, but we had to switch to manual brakes. And what that involves is a custom mounting plate. I used the stock 944 brake master cylinder and you just re-drill the brake pedal to add additional uh, downforce from your foot. In order to get the proper engine clearance, I had to do a custom hood with a hood scoop. So that is all fiberglass on there uh, for the skin and only the steel subframe exists for it. Currently, uh, the injectors that are in there are no longer 400 cc ones, they are 630 densos. The flow volume is much closer adapted to what the theoretical horsepower uh, of this setup is, so they will do good on this build. Aside from custom hood, I also wanted to drop some weight on uh, the roof, so I took the moon roof out made a fiberglass shell, bonded it to the top surface of it. Uh, in the rear, we got rid of the 54 pound rear glass and replaced it with a fiberglass piece, which weighs a fifth of that. And on the fiberglass piece, I still haven't fully installed the rear window. Uh, that's only gonna happen once I actually have it prepped and painted and then do a final install. I'm not gonna do the plexi window that it came with it. What I'm gonna do instead is get an actual piece of tempered glass and install it in there. The exhaust is a three inch exhaust from the downpipe all the way back to the backside. The differential in the car is a non-LSD unit right now. Eventually, I'm gonna to go to a Torsen. Uh, currently, it's just a 4.3 to one ratio from a non-turbo Supra. And that's gonna give us much better acceleration off the line. It's also gonna let us scorch the tires quite a bit more, so that's gonna be really fun. The cradle for the differential is completely custom welded. Uh, you have two custom drop-down links on the front side of the diff the cradle on the back, and then a lower drop bar across the top. And above that, we have replaced the steel that is the trunk decking and the rear spare well with just a piece of solid carbon fiber. The wheels that I have on it are off of a 911. They are uh, eight inch Fuchs. Everything on the interior has been completely gutted. There is not a single piece of interior left in there other than the driver and passenger seats. And even those, those are about 20 pounds lighter than the stock seats that come with a 944. For now, I have this center console in here with all the gauges. Eventually, I actually plan on uh, getting an AEM uh, digital dash right in the center. Uh, probably still keep the oil temp, uh, water temperature, and fuel level right here in the center, but uh, the tachometer is gonna go away, and I'm gonna replace that. It's gonna be on the AM digital dash. With this being custom hood and it being fiberglass right over the engine, uh, just gonna pop the hood. And what I did was I lined it with a uh, thermal acoustic material and then in the hottest area, I put uh, the thermal fiberglass tape as well. And the skin, you can see here for rivets, it, it's just riveted on there and bonded down with epoxy as well. So that's going to be about it for the overview and if you guys stay tuned you can watch me do everything else with this on the next episode right now what happened 
So during the dyno video, you saw a couple of issues happen. Uh, we blew off an intercooler hose. We fixed that real quick, but we were having this continuous issue with the fuel map where it just kept cycling and cycling and cycling and cycling and cycling and cycling and cycling. Uh, we tried new injectors, we tried changing out the spark plugs, tightening the spark plug gap, it wasn't any of that. Once I got it back home after not being able to complete the Dynatune, I started looking into it. The closest thing that I found that it could be is a vacuum leak or something to do with uh, idle air control valve. The next thing I want to do is I actually want to take block off the IACV and cap off all the vacuum lines and see if the problem persists because that is going to eliminate all our possible vacuum leaks from the system, especially given that it, it was indicating the IACV opening and closing to maintain the RPM as the fuel mixture was bouncing up and down. And I think those two going up and down was really what was the root of the issue. So I don't know if the little diaphragm valve that is in the IACV was acting up or if it was something completely different. But on the next episode for the 944, I'm gonna take, cap all that off, pull open the AEM programmer, and see what's happening with it. We'll take, try to get it fuel mixture done right, and as we get the fuel mixture tuned in, uh, we'll be able to use the same map that's already in there and see if we can get it driving. So, I'll see you guys in the next episode of a 944 build. Uh, not sure if that's gonna be in two weeks. Two weeks? Excuse me? Uh, two weeks. Two weeks! Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Anyways, catch you guys on the next one.